Um, well, it's good to be here. First sign in class for us. Although, you know, this recruiting is a little different these days with the early signing period in December and um, and then the possibilities, as, as you'll see, and you can tell the addition to guys during the, the break over the course of the, the Christmas break. And then signing, signing in February, still a handful of guys signing today. So it's a little different. I think we saw that a year ago when, uh, or a couple years ago when the early sign period started. The transfer portal has changed that even more. And then you take into the account coaching change, transition. Uh, I, I think the first recruiting class with any new staff is, um, we kind of call it a transitional class, is, is really, really important. And I'm proud of the way the guys, the staff, have handled things. Uh, we were spread out all over the place, uh, due uh, you know just trying to get here due to some staff still dealing with bowl games and and when they could get cut loose and when we could all get back. I, I think they did a, a really good job of us kind of pulling together and and putting together what I think is a really solid class to start things off for us. Now, it's done in stages with um, several different pieces kind of here. I need 19 total guys if you look. 19 total guys in the signing class, but it, it came in different stages. I kind of look at it in, as in high school guys that signed in December. Uh, we were fortunate to be able to hang on to five kids that were previously recruited by the old staff uh, that we thought fit what we were trying to do. Some of those guys have been on missions coming back. That's a little new for me. I haven't dealt with missions in quite a while, so that'll get to get to figure out how that works a little bit better but you know five in-state guys that had been recruited by the previous staff that still wanted to be a part of what we're doing uh, we communicated with all the guys that were committed actually lost a few guys that opened their recruitment up that, that just wanted to, to open things up and look and we were okay with that but uh, when you look at the five that signed that are already here on campus they've all gotten here in, in uh and Cinny and Jack Rigby and, uh, and Otto and Johnson Hansen and Siona Mo, all four, five of those guys are in-state guys, quality players, several have been on missions. Those guys are already here on campus and doing a good job. And one thing you do like is the fact when a kid signs and he goes on mission for two years, he comes back and he's gained about 20 pounds of muscle. I like the way, I like the way a couple of those guys showed up. So that's kind of the first stage of the signing class. I think that is, um, you know, that was a big critical part. Try to keep intact – Guys that had signed before or, or committed before that, that loved this place and had a passion for it. And I think our staff did a good job. We did not keep everybody. There were a handful of guys that didn't fit our footprint, didn't fit really the culture moving forward that we we talked about kind of changing the recruitment with them. And we did lose a couple kids down the stretch. And as I mentioned, a couple opened up their recruitment as the staff changed. That's, that's typical. But these five guys stuck with us, and we're excited to have them. You know, the next step was really how we were going to handle – kind of filling in the holes in the roster as best we could. We didn't know a lot about it. We'd watch a bunch of tape. And we just tried to really talk to the guys here that are being retained on staff and Al and DJ uh, and, and some of the guys in recruiting, talk to them about where they felt like some of the significant needs were. Uh, we'd watch a lot of tape and, and try to, in our own mind, maybe picture where we could see some changes schematically where we might need some, some, uh, some pieces to the puzzle. And that's where you know we went to work in the in the transfer market. Uh, not something we want to do full time. Not something we want to do in every class. But in this particular class, felt like it was something that could benefit us, maybe help us in the uh, transition this first year. And so we brought ten transfers in. One of those being a JC player. Nine of the others coming from uh, four year programs. And obviously, three of those guys following uh, me and Coach Cifalo and, and the guys from Arkansas stayed out in Logan Bonner, the quarterback, Brandon Bowling, the wideout, and, and Justin Rice, who had transferred from Fresno to Arkansas State due to the COVID shutdown and then really wanted to follow us out here, get back closer to home. And, and just the relationships were a huge part of that. They weren't going to stay put. They were going to leave and, and really wanted to finish up their careers with us. We're excited to have them here. Uh, but also, in that sense, you got a, a, a guy like Patrick Joyner, who came from Miami, who obviously had great relationships with – with Coach Bannon and his crew, a guy like Kyle Mayberry, the corner that I recruited out of high school and have stayed, just kind of never really broke communication with him, even though he's playing at Kansas. Guy that followed me on social media, I followed him, kind of been watching his career. When he graduated and, and put his name in the portal, it was a great opportunity to get back in on him. So I think the the JC D-tackle and Arian Peoples and the 
the the transfers from the Division One places all give us a chance to come in and plug in holes. And excited about all of them, and I think they all fit particular needs, especially when you think of the three, the, the four D linemen and Aaron Peoples, Jahazel Lee, who just got here this week from Georgia Tech, both Byron Vaughns and, and Patrick Joyner. With the changes that we're going to be making with Coach Spanda up front, I mean, that was something critical to go with the group that we already he had here. So those guys are already on campus, which is awesome. That's 15 guys that we added to the program basically in January that all get a chance to go through spring ball, go through all season with Paul Jackson and his staff. That is huge in our, uh, you know, being able to put a competitive team on the field in the fall, which we all want. Today was a little unique in the fact that we really only signed a few guys. In years past, you may have, you know, 10, 15 guys signed in February, but with early signing day, with the transfer portal, with guys being able to get here at midterm, with a handful of high school guys coming off missions and getting here in January, we really only signed three players today. And, and that is uh, that is unique territory. Uh, you know, Bo uh, Miley, the defensive lineman from here in, here in the state, obviously everybody knows the last name, is familiar with him. He's a nephew, I think, of Frank. Uh, and, and so gave him the opportunity day one. Like, we'd love to have you, want to keep you, want you to be a part of this, uh, even though we know Frank is not going to continue to coach here. And he was – Coach, that's where I want to be, and we're excited to get him. I think he's going to get big. I think he's going to end up moving from end down to the three-technique position and, and, and be a, a really good player as his career develops and as he develops. Um, Martavius Nana Davis, the speedster out of Alabama, 10 400-meter guy, and you never can have too much speed, so excited about him signing today. He's a kid that was committed to Louisiana Lafayette for a while and decommitted as some things changed there on their staff. We had recruited him at Arkansas State. Coach uh, Tuck had recruited him at Central Florida. And so we already had a relationship built with him. And, and it just felt like he fits what we do offensively. Uh, and, and like I said, 10, 400 meters is hard to recruit. Uh, you can you you got to uh, you know get in and, and take your chances when you can. And we're, we love having him. And then the last one would be Calvin Tyler, the running back that's going to be transferring in here in a couple months from Oregon State. Unique that he already had a relationship with Chucky. Chucky was on staff at Oregon State when the kid visited there. They had a great relationship, so it just made a lot of sense. When he decided to leave, he reached out to Chucky he and his family and really didn't open up his recruiting a whole lot. So you, you see this in stages. The December high school guys, guys coming off missions, the transfers that we felt like fit strategic positions, and then the three signees today. And then kind of the last guy is Ike Larson. Ike Larson is a high school in-state signee DB, signed in December, but won't be getting here till the summer. So we've already, you know, we already signed him back in December, but the, the, you know, the Aggie Nation won't really see him until he gets on campus in, in the summer and in the fall. And that rounds out 19, 19 kids in a class. Um, we're basically done with, with this particular class. We will you know, be looking to continue recruiting into August with some potential blue shirt spots, but this is the, the bulk of it. And I felt like we made good decisions physically but we made really good decisions on the personalities of the guys that are coming in, fit what we want to do, how we want to do things, the, the energy and enthusiasm of the program that we want to build, the kind of culture, a family-based culture. And uh, they all chose us, I think, to be a part of that. And I think it's a good first step in, in where we're headed. Okay, you guys can go ahead and ask questions for Coach Anderson. Coach, this is uh, Alex Fehoi with the uh, Salt Lake Tribune. Um, Thanks for thanks for doing this, and I uh, hope you're having a good day so far. Um, I I'm curious, you know, of the of the guys that you signed, not just in December, but um, but today, um, what what about this class of 19 points to the future of the Aggies, in your opinion, in terms of culture and in terms of style of play, both on defense, offense, and special teams? Well, we're trying to recruit speed, uh, number one, physically, and then we're trying to recruit. When you talk culture, just attitude, guys that are gonna that are going to buy into to, to how we're going to do things. We, we really stressed, you know, faith, family, and, and a fun environment of football. We gave even the kids that were already committed to the previous staff, we gave those guys opportunities to open up their recruitment if they just didn't feel comfortable with the new staff coming in. Made it really clear kind of who we're going to be, that we're going to push them really, really hard, expect them to work their tails off, expect them to do things right, uh, and truly create a family environment. And if that wasn't something that they were interested in, that, that you know, we, we would completely understand them opening their recruitment up. And what we saw were the guys that we were recruiting, that was what they gravitated towards. They wanted to be part of a family. They wanted to be challenged. 
we felt like all of them physically could help us. I mean, we watched tape on all these guys, uh, a ton of tape, and talked to coaches and high school coaches and felt like that we either knew a lot about them because of our already previous relationships, some of them that we had coached, or we had done our homework to know that physically they fit us and that, you know, just personality-wise they fit us as well. And, and we, what we didn't want to do was stretch. We didn't want to take anybody that we had questions about, especially in the first class. I told, I told John in the interview – you don't win championships in your first class, but you sure lose them if you're not careful. And I felt like we, we didn't have to stretch on anybody. We took guys that we thought fit this culture, this family in, in environment, energetic, uh, enthusiastic in, in environment. And, and that, that's what I think you see from these guys. And, and the ones that are already here on campus, I promise you, that's what we've seen out of them since day one. Coach Al Lewis from KBNU Radio. Um, I know you can't comment on names specifically, but it sure looks like looking at social media, there are other guys who change that's coming to Utah State. So my question would be about walk-ons and what you want to do with walk-ons, especially in state, and then that the kind of go along with that uh, in, in that situation is what do you think of the state of Utah? Because now everybody in the country is recruiting Utah kids these days. Yeah, everybody's coming in to recruit. And if you're paying attention as you are, social media, there's – there's a lot of great players in the state, and, and there's offers going out. We've made a bunch of offers in-state already in 22. Can't talk about walk-ons, but I can tell you that, that Coach Roberson, the director of player personnel, that we take that very seriously. Uh, we had a lot of walk-on players play for us at Arkansas State and earn scholarships at Arkansas State. I have, I myself as a coordinator, had a four-year starter at quarterback at Southern Miss who was a walk-on. Uh, who actually won the uh, award that's given out in uh, in Little Rock every year, uh, the Burles, Burles, Burlesworth Award, hard to, hard to say. Um, I, I believe in walk-ons, and I think they can help your football program. And there's no better place to get those than in-state, uh, where, where obviously tuition is going to be easier. It's going to be proximity to their family. Uh, I, I think guys come in and earn a spot. We put them on as soon as we can. So we're going to actively recruit in the state, number one, the best players, obviously, uh, and we want to compete uh, against the Power Five and Group of Five teams coming in to try to take them out of the state. We're going to make that clear. We're going to recruit against everybody. I think we've already got 15 to 20 offers out in the state for 22 already, uh, and we're going to continue to add to that list. But then we're going to actively recruit preferred walk-ons as well, guys that we think are right on the bubble, guys maybe that we would like to offer but that our numbers are just full, feel like they can go on scholarship in the future, and obviously we feel like they can get on the field and help us. And so – a lot of those guys will make announcements and, and do things on their own. We can't comment on it, but we are happy to have them, and we have offered them opportunities to come in and be a part of the team. Hey, Coach Anderson. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Eric. <laughs> sorry, Jason. I was just going to say, uh, Coach Anderson, this is Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. Um, how, were, how was your coaching staff able to manage recruiting for this year but also trying to understand the extra year of eligibility available to your seniors. Yeah, you know, we kind of had to separate the two to some degree. Um, you just kind of had to sit down with the administration, and I did with John, and, and tackle the super senior kind of conversation first. It's, it's I almost treat it like a bonus. It's, it's, again, we want those guys to have opportunities to come back, but in terms of big picture looking forward, you didn't want it to, you didn't want to make strategic decisions in the recruiting process based off of that one bonus year, because the numbers are going to go back down after one year, and, and that's the world you're going to have to live in. So we kind of kept them separated and, and looked for what do we need a year down the road, two years down the road, five years down the road, and that's where most of the decisions came in. A lot of these transfer kids have more than one year of eligibility. The ones that don't we thought were strategically guys that we could not pass on that could help our team through this first season to be as competitive as possible. Um, but we, we really just looked at in watching film and looking at the roster where we thought the most immediate holes were, and that is how we approached recruiting. And we really kind of put aside the super senior roster and just felt like it was a bonus, if that makes sense. Hey, Coach Anderson. Do you have any idea how many are going to come back? How many seniors right now do you think you might come back? Well, we, we – I would say probably 90% of the class is already back. We, we did lose a couple kids to transfer portal. We lost a couple kids that were just honestly physically done, uh, tired and ready to 
you know, you got married, got kids, wanted to go get a job. But uh, without giving you a, a, a number, because I honestly don't know the exact number, I would say 95% of the senior class is back on campus and, and preparing to, to play their, you know, that extra year. Hey, Coach Anderson, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. As, as you mentioned, this is obviously a year you, you wanted to bring in more seasoned Division I players. But I guess in future years, what would you consider to be an ideal mix of uh, high school kids, GOCO kids, transfer portal kids? Well, I think we're, we're in a position where we can, we can do a great job in state and in, in our footprint at the high school level. I'd love to see over half of our class be in that area, although I'll say this. You know, the transfer portal and how things maneuver moving forward is, is kind of uncharted territory. This is somewhere we've not been before. Uh, and so I think we have to see what kind of success we have with the transfers that we've brought in, see how they blend with the team and how they fit in our culture, and then kind of make decisions moving forward. Um, I would not ever want the entire class to be made up with transfers by any means. And I definitely want to start at home in the state of Utah. Uh, and, and when you've looked at Previous years, when teams were really, really good, they've done a phenomenal job up front on the O-line and D-line especially, and some key, uh, some key defensive and offensive players in positions of leadership. Uh, I don't know what that number is going to be. I mean, I figure we're going to take 25 uh, in a year in a full class, and I would expect well over half of that to be high school kids, most of those coming from the state of Utah. And then at that point, looking in and just seeing what your roster looks like in terms of injury, attrition, uh, guys transferring down to play more, guys that, like you saw this year, a couple of guys that maybe you know make their run at, at the NFL early or, or take a Power 5 type opportunity, I think those will dictate whether or not we feel a veteran player is necessary or not. But I don't, uh, I don't know if it's possible to give you a hard number on that, but I, I do definitely want to start with Utah high school players being the foundation of how we build this program moving forward. Hey, Coach, Jake Nielsen, Utah Statesman. Um, you touched on this a little bit, but I think it was really impressive that in such a short amount of time you were able to get so many guys to transfer into the program. Um, is that thanks to your experience and the experience of the staff, or how were you guys able to get so many dudes here in such a short amount of time? Well, I would tell you just the staff did a phenomenal job. They, they all love recruiting. They know it's important. If you're not recruiting, you're losing. I mean, bottom line, if you're not recruiting every day, you're losing to somebody. Uh, they all love it. They put in the time and energy. And, and I think there's the personalities uh, on this staff are built for building relationships. And, th and that's what you see. Uh, some of these guys were guys that myself and, and the handful of guys that came from Arkansas State already had relationships with. Coach Banda and his crew in Miami, Coach Tuck. There were a lot of different, uh, I don't know, lines crossed in there, but, but really just came down to putting in the effort. Identifying guys we thought that fit and putting in the effort. And then I mean, I think there's a ton to sell here. Uh, you look at the place, uh, you look at the tradition and history of the past, previous years, uh, that along with just the personalities and the relationships that we built, these guys, you know, they chose us over some really good schools. Um, but but I, I really, I think it just comes down to a group of staff members that really put in the time and energy to, to outwork some folks in the recruiting process. Hey, Coach, uh, 24, Isaac Draxler with 24-7 Sports. Uh, do you see the transfer portal as a net benefit as far as getting those guys from Power 5 programs? You, you also lost a few. So do you see that as a, as a negative for U, uh, Utah State or a positive? Well, in this case, it was – I mean, it hurt us with a couple of players that we didn't want to lose. You know, we lose two offensive linemen to, to Power 5 programs that, that we were frustrated. We, we didn't want them to leave. And so in that sense, it, it hurt us. But, but you also look at the guys we're able to add to the program that have had experience, started games uh, at the Division One level, played significant snaps at the Power Five level, uh, you know, all-conference players, player of the year type candidates that we're able to bring in and plug in. So, I mean, time will tell. I don't think you ever really know until you get in down the road and see how things gel. It, it still comes down to taking all these athletes and creating one – uh, you know, cohesive unit, but on paper, I would tell you that it does, it does fill some significant immediate needs in a way that a high school freshman just does not fill. Uh, you just, you build experience by over time. 
And, and you're bringing in guys that have started, you know, 12, 15, 20 some odd games at this level. There's some, some big time residual benefits of that. And then also, do you see uh, this staff and, and your recruiting department, uh, you know, uh, trying to find guys really early? Or do you see more like, you know, offering the 22 kids now? And, and what do you, how do you see that? Well, we already started the process on 22s. It, it, we obviously wanted right. to, we wanted to make sure that we finished this process well. I think you got to be careful about, you know, jumping to 22s when you haven't completely finished the 21 process. Uh, so I thought we 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 managed to to battle through and fight off some guys to put this class together. And then this is a new footprint for most of us, with the exception of Chucky, who played here and has been in the area. Uh, DJ and Al and a few guys uh, in, in the recruiting room, most of the guys that are on the on the ground. You know, we've been in areas uh, that have been, you know, most of us have been in the South, even though we've got ties to the West Coast and ties to the region in some way, we haven't recruited in it in, in a while. So we wanted to make sure we got our feet on the ground and then we started the process. But we've already we've already started evaluating 22s every day. Like I said, I think we've got somewhere 15, 18 offers already out in the state already, starting to branch out into our footprint, which is going to take us, uh, you know, in a lot of different areas. But um, we've got to stay on pace with the rest of the country as well. We 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 can't just wait to wait. Uh, so if we think they fit us, whether they got offers or don't, we're gonna we're gonna jump in and and start recruiting. I do think we'll still continue to look at the transfer portal because it's available and it and it's. Um, again, it's it's guys that have experience. We're just looking for the right guys, guys that fit us. What about the 23s and 24s? Uh, do you expect to, to hit those it's as well? Already have made a couple offers in the 23. Uh, 24 is a little bit out, uh, a little further out than, than I'm comfortable looking at at this point, to be honest with you. There are some no-brainers, but I'll be honest with you, if a guy's a no-brainer for me right now, he's probably a no-brainer for everybody else in the country. And so that whole process is going to change so much between now and when that guy actually has to make a decision, it's hard to even project just how big of a recruit they're going to be. So we're going to focus on 22. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll stick our toe in the 23 market, especially here at home. I think that changes if COVID changes where we can spend time in camps and, and, and that sort of thing too, without the you know availability of doing camps and actually coaching guys on in a, one-on-one -on -one type situation that even slows down a little bit because all you're doing is watching you're watching tape. So uh, we'll concentrate on 22s for now. Dipper toe a little bit in 23s. Probably won't see a whole lot of 20s and fours and 25s for us to be honest with. You. Coach, I was hey, Coach. Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead, Alex. Thanks, um, Coach Alex with the Tribune again. I was just curious. Um, I saw that three of the of the players you guys signed. Uh, were recently at Arkansas State, which is where you came from. And I just uh, wanted to know if you can share a little bit about your connection with those three players in particular and uh, why you felt it was why you felt they fit this system here and this culture. Sure, that, that you sure. Wanted. Well, Logan Bonner is the quarterback. You know, he, he was in a position where, um, you know, he was going to leave regardless. Just, just felt like it. He had, he had two years left due to COVID and a previous injury. I recruited him out of high school. I actually coached the quarterbacks there for two years. He was in my room for two years as my number two quarterback to a really good starter in Justice Hanson. Uh, so by the time he's done, he will have spent seven years with me, not to mention the year of that I recruited him. So that relationship was, was close. Uh, he put his name in the portal before I actually made decisions to leave. So he was going to leave regardless. We had a lot of tears and, and a lot of uh, a lot of conversations before he chose to do that. I didn't like him leaving, but I supported it uh, with the dynamic of of that quarterback room and, and there being two basically two starting quarterbacks in that room. I, he did a great job on the field for us. He fits our offense perfectly, and so when I took this job, uh, just the opportunity for him to come here was to me a perfect fit, and he um, he jumped at the opportunity to come here and and, and be a part of that room. Brandon Bowling is really similar. They were roommates the entire time at Arkansas State. He has a phenomenal relationship with me and Coach Cephalo. He was really not sure if he was going to play his extra year. He's, you know, he's already graduated, uh, had made comments to Coach Cephalo. I'm not sure I'm going to come back, but if I do, I'm only going to play for you. And so once, so once we made the move here and Coach Cephalo decided to come, 
it just made sense. He wanted to finish his career uh, here with Coach Cephalo and myself, and he and Logan have been roommates for the past five years. Uh, for them to do it together was really big. You know, Justin Rice was a little bit different. He's a guy that we got late last summer when, when Mountain West was not planning to play. I don't think he'd ever would have left Fresno if, if you know, Mountain West was going to play. He would have played, taken his chances, tried to go to the NFL. But once he got there, he, he connected with me, Coach Cephalo, Coach Premsky, really, really well. Um, spent a lot of time one-on-one with him throughout the course of the year, trying to get him acclimated. And, you know, for him, his decision was, do I go to the NFL or do I not? I think once he decided not to go to the NFL, he didn't want to go through another coaching change. The opportunity to stay here with guys that he really knows – and get back to the West Coast was just something that that I think he thought was would just made sense for him as well. Um, you know, didn't want to recruit those guys. I wanted it to happen naturally. Uh, encouraged every one of those players to go back to Arkansas State and to see how things go. But these three guys clearly were not going back. We're going to move on with their careers, and we're really lucky to have them here with us. In terms of uh, in terms of the quarterback, Logan is his name, right? Logan Bonner, um, yes. Logan Bonner, thank you. Um, you know, I think I think there could be a possibility of a narrative of you bringing in a quarterback and maybe he's the prohibitive starter because you're bringing him in, you have a prior relationship, that kind of thing. And I'm just curious, um, you know, with the quarterbacks you know that you have from the previous class or previous roster, bringing him in, how does he fit sort of with that quarterback competition if, if that's how you see it? Well, I'll tell you, never, ever promised a guy a starting spot, and Logan's the first one to tell you that. Uh, and we made it really clear to the guys on the roster that it's a wide open competition. We were clear with Logan about what we had on campus, and, and that we uh, we obviously felt like that we needed to we needed to try to bring in a veteran guy if we could to create stability in the room. But that whoever wins the job this spring is going to be the starting quarterback. He obviously has the skill to do that, but I think we got other guys in the room that have skill as well. We kept them uh, informed all along the way that we would potentially bring in a transfer that the room, you know, it, we did not have enough bodies in the room to feel comfortable uh, going into the season as is. And we definitely wanted somebody here to be able to go through the off-season program. So uh, that room is unique, and it is on every campus. I mean, one guy's going to play. We played two last year due to COVID at Arkansas State, but really have no desire to do that again in the future. And didn't really want to do it this year. But everybody knows that that room is built off of competition, and everybody in the room is going to have an opportunity to compete and we'll let we'll let you know productivity and efficiency uh, in leadership di- you know dictate who the guy is. And uh, Logan believes he can be that guy, or he wouldn't have come. But he also knows he's got to earn it, and he's got to earn it every day. Coach Anderson, Jason Turner again. Uh, obviously, Cash Valley fans are very familiar with Ike Larson. Uh, played all over the field at Skyview, and then before that at Logan, um, especially. You really got to see a special teams play this year, maybe not as much as in previous years, but where ultimately do you, do you see his ideal fit being at, at the F, FBS level? Well, you know, we, we feel like he's probably going to grow into a safety uh, at this level. He's, I know he's played corner and played some wide out, but typically guys are going to put on 15, 20 pounds of muscle once they get into a program and are playing one sport and eating and uh, right and, and the nutrition that we have. Just feel like he's got the frame to grow – Expect him to probably end up playing safety for us. And you mentioned special teams; those guys start on every special team. And that's huge for us. Moving, you know, moving on and make sure he's got much speed in space and good guys out in space. He definitely fits that on film. Coach Al Lewis again. You haven't even talked about your best recruit during the recruiting season. You got engaged. Can you can you comment on that? <laughs> You're right. That's the only five star signee of. Uh, of this recruiting class, yes, I can. I'm excited. Uh, did get in, engaged. Uh, actually, got engaged out here a couple weeks ago when Brittany came in for for a visit over the weekend. Um, you know, just uh, I'll, I'll tell you, man. Just obviously, everybody knows my story and my background. The last years have been have been a huge challenge between uh, my wife's battle with cancer and and losing her uh, after a couple year battle of that. My losing my father as well. Uh, you know, God just brought Brittany into my path. Uh, last year, uh, somewhere around, I don't know, November or so, became really, really good friends and uh, ultimately ended up moving from being friends to, to dating. And, uh, you know, I just figured out I, I, I better I better get her to sign the dotted line before she, she smartened up and, and ran the other direction. But uh, she and her two daughters will be moving out here 
uh, later in the spring, and uh, we're going to get married uh, in May. And uh, she's excited about coming, and I'm excited about having them. Any other questions, guys? Yeah, Coach, just one more quick one. You've addressed this with Logan Bonner, but I guess just generally speaking with these, uh, especially with the transfers coming in and how they may compete for these jobs where there may already be, especially with these super seniors, taking some of those spots and how you're going to make that work. Well, never would recruit a transfer player if we didn't feel like he could impact the, the program immediately. Uh, again, didn't, didn't promise any of these guys starting positions, promised them the opportunity to compete for one. We felt like they filled some significant needs where there was either lack of depth, uh, injury at the position, or, or maybe just because schematically we're going to do some things a little differently than the previous staff. So we targeted the positions specifically because we felt like there was a need. But it's, you know, it's their job to come in and compete. Uh, and, and again, you know, we feel like we identified guys that can come in and impact us. So whether that is an every down player or a, a uh, you know, a, a, a role player that's playing significant snaps, all these guys look on paper and on film to be guys that can do that. Now, what, what their role is, is going to be completely up to them and how they handle the spring and summer. And I tell every kid that I ever recruit, and I'll continue to tell the kids here, I'm going to try to out-recruit every player on the team every day. It's my job to go out and improve our talent level by recruiting a higher-level player physically uh, in every area, uh, you know, guy that fits our program, guys that fits our scheme, you name it. And so I need to make it hard for every guy here to stay on the field. And competition is what makes everybody better. So it's, it's, a, tough, it's a tough environment to be in, there's no doubt. But – Everybody needs to understand that they've got to continue to improve and that we're always recruiting to improve that room and to honestly out recruit them where it may makes them, you know, makes their job even even harder. And, and coach, just one one last question. A lot of these guys are on campus now. Just how big of a, a an advantage is that for you and your staff to get them in your system now, especially with the you know spring ball not that far away? Yeah, all but four of them are on campus right now, to be honest with you. So uh, that is huge. Uh, Ike Larson will be here in the summer. Bo uh, Maele will be here in the summer. Uh, Nana Davis will be here in the summer. Actually, we're really fortunate because of Calvin Tyler's academic schedule, he is likely to be here for spring ball. So you would you would say, I mean, that is, that is huge to get all offseason, all spring ball, and then fold that into the summer. Uh, that was one of the reasons that we wanted to go the route we did with the transfer players and guys that were able to be ready to go now. Uh, had had some of these guys not been able to get out and be here in January, might have changed our approach. We might have gone with a high school kid instead. Uh, but but there's, there's no substitute for four and a half, five months of working with a guy, Paul Jackson working with a guy, learning X's and O's from the, from the coordinators and position coaches. I think it's going to be a big – part of us being able to be a competitive team early next fall. I hope it is.